We turn now to cholera, and an outbreak has killed hundreds of people and sickened more than 100,000 in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The World Health Organization says the epidemic, which started in March, has hit several communities along the Congo River and spread to the neighboring Republic of Congo. Aid agencies are concerned the disease may cause further death in the region. Authorities in the DRC and the Republic of Congo are working with UN agencies and non-governmental organizations to set up cholera treatment clinics in the affected areas. The groups also aim to boost surveillance and case management measures. A new study is helping to better understand cholera outbreaks worldwide. The study published this week in the American Journal of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene finds that nutrient-rich river discharges into coastal waters are contributing to the rise of organisms associated with cholera. Researchers tested the Bay of Bengal and other major river basins in South America and Africa, including the Congo region. Experts say these findings may help predict future outbreaks of cholera. And joining us now on the phone from the U.S. state of Massachusetts to tell us more is Dr. Shafiqul Islam. He's the lead investigator of the study and a professor at Tufts University in Boston. Dr. Islam, welcome to the program. Thank you. Historically, it is said that cholera is caused by lack of hygiene, poor sanitation, population congestion, among other things. Why was it important to look at this specific angle uh, that uh, relates to the, the role of the rivers with regards to cholera outbreak? So th there are two processes going on. One, once the cholera starts, then the issues of water sanitations are important. But the key question here is that when will the next cholera start? That is a question we wanted to answer. For example, Haiti did not have cholera for the last 100 years. Suddenly it had. Then it exploded because of the lack of water and sanitation infrastructure. The key question then is, is it possible to identify when the next cholera outbreak will come in a particular region of the world? so that we can get ready. If I can tell that the next cholera in Congo will come two months from now, then I can let the public health officials and the government and non-governmental organizations to get ready. So that is where essentially then you need something which is a longer lead time. For that, we need climatic or environmental variables, which can tell us at least two to three months in advance that conditions are such that Let's say in Bangladesh, next spring, you will have much above than the normal rate of cholera, at least two to three months in advance. Now, there, there have been some studies that says that uh, global warming might play a role in the increase of cholera, but your studies seem to, to, to find otherwise. What can you tell us about that? So there are two things going on. One is that is there a direct relationship between global warming, meaning that if sea surface temperature goes up, will cholera go up? For our studies telling us, no, not necessarily true. This relationship is not causal. But at the same time, we also understand that if there is a global warming and that leads to some extreme conditions, meaning that if a particular region of the globe becomes more drought prone, as opposed to, say, when you have drought, if you have severe drought, that may lead to more cholera. On the other hand, if you have flood, if there are more floods in a climate change scenario, that may also lead to more cholera. So there is implication really for cholera and climate change, but it is not directly linked with sea surface temperature. Well, Dr. Islam, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And that was uh, Shafiqul Islam, Professor of Civil and Environmental Engineering at Tufts University in Boston. We thank him for joining us. Vincent? And thank you very much, Eleanor, for that very informative health segment. And viewer, remember to join, um, tune in uh, for Lino Mudu's health reports every Tuesday and Thursday right here on In Focus.